beloved, let us always give thanks to the Lord because Psalm 22 verse 3 says that the Lord God inhabits in the praise of his people. Beloved, because God inhabits in our praise, let us always give thanks to him. And do you know what, beloved? As you give thanks to the Lord, because satanic influences and demonic entities cannot stay around wherever God's name is mentioned, when you keep praising God, beloved, the presence of God will manifest to dispel all evil spirits that has been sent to torment you. And so, beloved, let us always remember to give thanks and praise to our God because not only does it exalt his holy name, but it also dispels evil spirits around us. And so today we are still continuing our studies on the book of Genesis and we are studying Genesis chapter 35. For the past weeks, we've been learning about the life of Jacob and his family. So in the previous studies, we learned that after 20 years of Jacob living in his uncle Laban and father-in-law's house, God finally told Jacob to leave his uncle's house and go to the land of Canaan where his father Isaac lived. And so God really wanted Jacob to go to Bethel, the place that Jacob had anointed to him before when he was running away from his brother. And so Jacob set out to go into the land of Canaan. And on his way, that is where he met his brother Esau and reconciled with him. But after Jacob left Esau, he went to a place called Succoth and settled there. After Jacob had settled in Succoth for a while, he moved on and pinched his tent near a city called Shechem. The inhabitants of this city are called the Hittites. These people are an evil and wicked people who worshipped idols and God hated their ways because of their idol worshipping. Beloved, and so because Jacob did not fully obey God and pinched his tent near these people, he suffered serious consequences. His daughter Dinah was raped and in a retaliation, Dinah's brother, beloved, murdered the whole men in the city for punishment of sin of one man. And so, beloved, after the children of Jacob had done this terrible thing, Jacob was afraid that the neighboring towns would gather up against him. And so, beloved, this is where we end last time. And we continue this lesson in today's study. So, beloved, let's go on and hear the word of the Lord in Genesis chapter 35. So beloved, at this point, Jacob is afraid for his life because of all the men that his sons had killed in the city of Shechem. And so chapter 35 of Genesis verse 1, it says, God said to Jacob, go to Bethel at once and live there. Build an altar there to me, the God who appeared to you when you were running away from your brother Esau. Instead of God telling off Jacob that he brought this disaster upon himself by disobeying him, God didn't reprove Jacob. All he did was to tell Jacob to immediately move into the land of Bethel and build an altar there for him. Beloved, an altar is a place of prayer dedicated to God to have fellowship with him. And so, beloved, this is what God wanted with Jacob. God wants fellowship with him, but he wanted this fellowship to be in the place where Jacob had originally dedicated to him before. God wants to communicate with Jacob and have intimate fellowship with him. But there is only one place that God wants to do this, and that is in Bethel, a place where Jacob had originally set apart and anointed to be a place of worship for God. But for us, because Jesus Christ has come to pay for the sin that separated man from God, when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, beloved John 14 verse 23 says that Jesus and his Father God comes to live inside of us. And so, beloved, we don't really need any particular place uh, to set up as a prayer place. You can do that, but beloved, that doesn't mean that that is where God is. God is in your heart, as he says it in uh, John 14, 23, that those who love me and obey my teaching, Jesus is speaking here, my Father will love them and my Father and I will come to them and live with them. 
And so because Jesus Christ and his father God lives inside of you, beloved, you don't have to go to a special place where you can hear from them. You can hear from them anytime, any day, because they are with you 24 seven. And also beloved, Jesus uses an example to show us uh, the real meaning of this because he, it was in those days thought that God would only appear to people at certain places. And so Jesus talked to uh, the Samaritan woman to explain to her that God is not only worshipped at a particular place, but God is worshipped in spirit and in truth because his spirit is with us everywhere and we can call upon God everywhere. And so beloved, let's hear what Jesus told the Samaritan woman in John 4 verse 20 to 24. So it says, The Samaritan woman at the well said to Jesus, Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. But Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. So Jesus is making it clear here that we don't have to uh, only get God's attention at a particular place. And Jesus went on to say, You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, meaning the Jews, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers that the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshippers must worship him in spirit and in truth. So Jesus gives this explanation and let us know that God is spirit. And so if we have believed in him and his spirit is in us, as John 14, 23 says, then, beloved, we can call upon God anywhere, any place, and he will hear us out. How wonderful to have access to God always. It's amazing, beloved. We are so blessed in this age. The Old Testament people, because their sins had not yet been uh, paid for by Jesus Christ, they could not have communion with God every day because the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, will come to them and leave them. But because Jesus Christ has paid for the sin that separated us from God, God's presence, beloved, has come to live with us. And as Jesus says it over here in John 14 verse 23, him and his father are with us always. And so beloved, we are so fortunate to have the maker of the whole world with us 24 seven. Let us always beloved give praise to God because we will not entirely understand fully what he has done for us here beloved. But when we go to heaven, then we will fully understand what he did for us on the cross of Calvary. So, beloved, even though we don't understand it, let us praise him because it's a wonderful thing to have the Holy Spirit with you 24-7. And so, beloved, going on and reading from verse 2, it says, So Jacob said to his family and to all who were with him, Get rid of the foreign gods that you have and be clean and change your garments. And so because they are going to Bethel to worship and fellowship with God, Jacob tells them to get rid of their idols, their old garments, and make themselves clean. And we know that they have idols with them because we know that Rachel, when they were coming out from their father's house, took her father's household gods with her. And so, beloved, the Bible, when it says idols, does not only represent the images, like the wood carved into images or metal or stone images. An idol also, beloved, can represent people, money, or any object, or anything, beloved, that we hold dear in our life, that represents um, the stronghold in our life. An idol, beloved, can be anything that prevents us from obeying God. So whatever, beloved, makes us not obey the word of God is an idol in our life. Anything that we hold dear in our life, that, beloved, prevents us from listening to God and doing what God requires us to do, beloved, can become an idol. Beloved, so your parents, your 
spouse or even your children can become an idol to you and this is because the, if you choose to obey these people instead of what God's word says then you have made these people your God and so they become your idol and also the garments uh, signify habits in the Bible so whenever the Bible talks about garments it talks about um our habits and so beloved because they were going to worship with God Jacob was telling them to change and to throw away all these things so beloved if we also want to have an intimate relationship with God then we must also put away the idols that we have in our life the people beloved that we have made them idols the people that we have made them God in our life those people whom we listen to Rather than listening to the word of God, beloved, all those people we have, we must put them away and take the word of God and make it first place in our life. And beloved, we must also put away our old garments, which is our habits, our bad and sinful habits, beloved. If you want to become intimate with the Lord, then we must put all these sinful habits away. And it says it in Colossians chapter 3 verse 5 to 9. It says, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of this, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived. But now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as this, anger, rage, malice filthy language from your lips do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with all its evil practices so we have to put away everything beloved that is filthy and does not please the lord if we want to have intimate relationship and fellowship with him so verse 3 says Jacob is speaking here and he says, We are going to live here and go to Bethel, where I will build an altar to the God who helped me in the time of my trouble and who has been with me everywhere I have gone. Beloved, Jacob is very much aware that it is the presence of God with him that has made him overcome all the troubles that he has encountered in his life. And so in verse 4, he says, So they gave Jacob all the foreign gods that they had, and also the earrings that they had with them. He buried them beneath the oak tree near Shechem. Earrings were associated with worship in those days, and so their earrings identified them as idol worshippers. And so, beloved, because they were getting ready to dedicate their life back to God, they put all these things, beloved, away. These things that identify them as idol worshippers, they put all of them away so that they can rededicate their life back to God. And so, verse 5 says, When Jacob and his son started to leave, the terror from God fell over all the people in all the towns of that area so that no one attacks Jacob's family because jacob obeyed god and left the city of shechem to bethel where god wanted him to be and because jacob made his family get rid of all the gods and all the filthy things that were with them beloved god protected jacob and put fear on all those people that were meaning to harm jacob and his family this is what the Lord God, beloved, would do to us also if we give our life to him, beloved, and obey him. He will also protect us from all the people, beloved, that have evil planned for us. God will make his fear fall upon them so that, beloved, all these people cannot attack us and destroy us or, beloved, harm us in any way. And so read it on verse 6 says, Jacob came with all his people to Lax which is now known as Bethel, in the land of Canaan. He built an altar there and named the place for the God of Bethel, because God had revealed himself to him there when he was running away from his brother Esau. Rebekah's nurse, Deborah, died and was buried beneath the oak south of Bethel, so it was named Oak of Weeping. It is thought that since Deborah, Rebecca's nurse, 
was with Jacob around this time, it meant that Jacob's mother, Rebecca, had died. And this is why her nurse has come to live with Jacob to be a mother figure for Jacob. But sadly, she too dies. So, beloved, Jacob never saw his mother again. Jacob never saw his beloved mother who helped him into tricking his brother to get his brother's blessing. After Jacob ran away from the land of Canaan into his uncle's house because he was afraid of his brother killing him, he never sees his mother again. This is so sad for Jacob. And the nurse who also comes to comfort him also dies. But God also revealed himself to Jacob here and promises him of his blessings. And so, beloved, let's read from 9. It says, When Jacob returned from Mesopotamia, God appeared to him again and blessed him. God said to him, Your name is Jacob, but from now on it will be Israel. So God named him Israel. So God confirms for the 